Mm -hmm. So the, what we call surveying your database can be done in many different ways. Um, we have one that we'll go through today called the shop local survey contest. So it's got like a, a shopping local vibe to it. But really the, the intention of any survey that you do for your database is to get to know more about the people within it. So our uh, CEO used to have a business separate to what he's doing now with Bark Ranch, and uh, he created a uh, fitness business. That's a lot of his background when he was studying and things like that. And he would, as a personal trainer, would tell his personal trainers that he, he worked with, as well as follow this himself, he would survey his, his, his network of people that he's working with. And really the goal was to make sure you have obviously the accurate contact information for sure, but also understand how you can better serve these people, right? Finding out about their likes, their dislikes, their interests, their work situation, their goals, their, their vision for what they want to have for themselves or, or their lifestyle. And it is something that's heavily used in a lot of professions, but in real estate, sometimes you hear about agents doing it, sometimes not. So that's what we'll, we'll get into today. So the premise of this is for the shop local survey is to send this survey to your database and promote it on your social media. And the people that would answer it, if you want to incentivize them, can enter to win a prize. And that is one of the most effective ways to get people to give you the information that you want, right? To incentivize mm -hmm. it. And so I think about this for myself, right? because of my like title and my position within the company, every now and then I'll get reached out to by different products and services saying, hey, review this or uh, see if you're interested in this or fill out the survey. And if they just like fill out the survey, if I have time and I feel like I want to, sure. But more often than not, I will just skim past that message on LinkedIn or uh, right. that email. But if they give some sort of incentive, then it changes my decision-making process because I've had times where someone was like, do this survey and we'll give you $50 uh, Amazon voucher. And I was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll do this. That's an easy decision. Even though it takes yeah. 15, 20 minutes, it's 50 bucks. So there's different ways that you can incentivize people. It can mean an investment from you as the person wanting to work your database and nurture that, or it could be something you actually combine with the interviews that you're doing. So it's really up to you about your approach here. But we'll go through prizes a little bit later on. First, you want to think about how you would really utilize a uh, survey. So there are a variety of tools that you can use, uh, starting with one called SurveyMonkey. It's probably like the main one that you'll hear or have used. Uh, it's free. It's a great tool to use to check out. Others will use Typeform, right? This one I haven't personally used myself. Again, it's free um, and you can create surveys this way. But personally, the ones that I've used in the past as I'm a, a G Suite user has been via Google Forms. So a lot of people hear about Google Docs and Google Sheets and presentations and things like that, but they also have essentially a survey software as well. So you can utilize Google Forms to create a survey from scratch or really anything, um, but it's organized in a way we can add in questions, sections, videos, images, multiple choice, paragraph-based questions, all sorts. So it's quite intuitive, right? If you type in like, uh, you know, what is your name? What happens is that it actually auto-categorizes the type of question that you're using based on the answer that you would probably want to have. You can make things required uh, or just optional. You can add in questions very quickly just by clicking these little symbols along the left hand side, or the right hand side, sorry, as well as videos like from YouTube and images and all sorts of things. So this can be a fantastic uh, tool to create a survey. One of the reasons why I really like this is because as a G Suite user, you want to have everything relatively in the same place, you know, via your Google Drive. And so you can use something like Google Forms as it integrates with Google Sheets. And so you can actually create a spreadsheet that once you've got all your questions ready to go, you know, you highlight your questions, you know, I'll just put question two. Uh, this can be, where do you work? Uh, then I can add another question in here, which is what is your favorite thing about the community? You know, things like this. Mm -hmm. When I go into responses here and create a sheet, what will happen? is that anyone that responds to that survey when I send it out, 
they will have all of their answers listed within this Google sheet. And so there's no like need for really copying and pasting answers over. Like it, it does that automatically. And then you can cool. export this and put it into your CRM. So long as the columns line up with what you have in your CRM. So this can save a huge amount of time, um, you know, compared to if you were to do this just by talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one. you know, you can get bulk answers uploaded into your CRM. Yeah. So this I think is, is really a good strategy. Now, to give you an example of what it might look like, you'll have a survey that looks maybe like this, right? Supporting our local communities, live, play, and shop local, put in the details of what you want to grab and a variety of different questions, which we'll get into shortly. Mm -hmm. So, and this is all just this, um, the, uh, what's it called? The, the Google forms, that's just emailed straight to them and they, is, they have to click on it or is it, is it open? I'm just trying to think of, the the main trouble I have with anything online with clients or you know business owners or anything is no one is as good at the internet as they think they are and it's always like they always say like I just wish you could just come here and do and especially with COVID it's yep. I get more and more people saying I wish we could just sit down at a table and do this like with a pen and paper and you know what I mean so it's especially with business owners, those are going to tend to be a little bit older of a, of a crowd. You know, it's yeah. like, it's sure. the, the internet is, the internet is our friend, but that older generation is like, it's, it's almost easier to not use the internet with them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hear what you're saying. So this survey would be mainly for your database, the people you already know, because if you were to send it to people you don't know, they're going to think, why would I answer this? Unless the prize was really high enough. So usually this mm -hmm. is for your own network. So it could be business owners that you've already connected with. Can you send it to people you don't know? Of course, but I find that they're less likely to answer. It's more about updating yeah. your own databases information. Uh, but as it relates to sending it, it's super straightforward. You would click send here in the top right corner and this little pop-up will appear. Now you can send individually for sure, but you can also just grab this via a link and put this into an email or a social media post where it's like, fill out the survey here and someone clicks on it. Then what would happen is that they would be taken to a page that would look like this here. So I'm previewing this now. And so it's very clear and straightforward for what you're wanting them to do. Um, so it's not like there's a lot of challenges to it, but again, to each, uh, each person has their own level of comfort, I guess, with technology. Um, yeah. And you, if you have people that are just really not comfortable with technology, you know, sending a survey out to them may not be the most effective thing if it's digital. Um, but that being said, we don't want to reduce the opportunity to get this information in a quick streamlined manner um, by, you know, cutting them off of the, uh, at the knees, basically. So yeah. this we've found has been very easy because people just tick things and, you know, highlight what their answers are, right? Pretty straightforward there for, for their responses, but depends mm -hmm. obviously on the age and experience of that individual. Yeah. Now, one thing with Google Forms, if you are doing it this way, is clicking on the settings icon and making sure that there is no uh, default setting which could reduce the likelihood of someone being able to answer this. So whenever I create surveys, it by default has this ticked, which is that it's going to re restrict uh, answers to be from people that have a Parkbridge email address. So if I were to send this out to my uh, clients or the people that I'm working with, they wouldn't be able to answer it unless they had a at parkbridge.com email address, which is very much defeating the purpose. So yeah. you want to make sure to uncheck that if it is checked. So that way there's no restrictions on who can or can't answer that survey there. So that's a really important one. And every now and then you'll see companies that use Google Forms will send out surveys and they will uh, forget to uh, uncheck that box and you'll go to fill out the survey and you'll think it's not letting me, why is this the case? Uh, it just streamlines it a lot easier for you. Gotcha. Cool. So that's really about like, Kind of the, the IT setup of it. I found it a very straightforward platform. Uh, but to streamline your process, what I'll be doing after the session is uh, sending you through a document which is going to cover uh, really the, the contest itself. It's this one here. So the way, and we'll, we'll use this as our, our main resource later on for the session. So the way you're going to do this is 
really by creating this digital survey and sending out. I mean, if you wanted to create a physical one, you can, but there's a logistics in regards to sending it back and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you want to gather this information so that way you can better serve them. One of the biggest challenges I hear from agents and just people, I guess, in any sales role is, I don't know what to say when I want to follow up with them. Right. I've got a lot of information about real estate, but maybe they don't respond so much. And I just want to have a conversation with them, see what they're up to, how they're going. How do I figure out what to say? So by surveying them and finding out not just about their contact information, but a bunch of information about them as an individual, you can better provide value when you're following up because you actually know them better. So this works the same way with your interviews in general, right? When you're interviewing someone, you're going to learn more about them, more about them than just their business. You're going to learn a lot about them as an individual. It's giving you lots of items of value to follow up with them later on. But in order to get this information, you need to explain why, right? Why you're actually asking for it. If someone's asking me to do a survey, especially if I've got no incentive to do it, and they just say, complete this, the immediate question is, why would I do that? So you need to explain what's in it for you. And we have kind of an example of how you would address these down here. But really, that is so vital because everyone wants to know about how their information is being used. And so when you are addressing this, either speaking to someone on a post on social media or connecting with someone that way, or even within the survey or email itself, you'd want to highlight the rationale behind what you're doing. You know, I'd love to know more about what you do for a living and where you work, because maybe I can refer you business, right? Mm -hmm. At, for my role, I'm always networking. And it really gives me an opportunity to connect people together with the people, products, and services that they should be connected with. Right? It could be that you ask them or say to them, I'd love to learn more about your home situation because that way I can add more value to you and help you buy, sell, and invest successfully, helping you generate more wealth and a better quality of life for you and your family. Or I'd love to know more about your hobbies and interests, you know, their likes, uh, so that way I can share products, services, events, and deals with you that you're actually going to appreciate. Right? Because I'm out in the community all the time, meeting local business owners and professionals, I'm always finding out what's new, what's awesome, what's happening. And I really want to be your go-to agent, your go-to person for everything you need. Mm -hmm. So it's always about pre-framing that why. Now, your why may be different. And that's why you need to make sure that you're articulating that in your own way. Because you don't want to be kind of you know, being inauthentic with this. I talk about this a lot with the booking interview process. You know, when you're booking interviews with uh, business owners and someone asks you, why are you doing this? Yeah, you want to sound good, but you want to be truthful as well. And that means bringing up your profession, highlighting what's really in it for you. Because if you skim past that, people are going to think, mm, they're not really giving me the whole answer here. And so mm -hmm. we talk about that in other sessions there, but explaining the why is so very important. Now, as for the information you actually want to gather, right? This can include, but it's not limited to, or it doesn't have to be these things, but usually you're going to fo focus on these ones here. So contact information. This one's pretty straightforward, right? Find out the best ways to contact them, maybe even their social media, if you are going to use that information, right? You do not need to ask for Pinterest, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, if you're not even on those platforms or using those platforms heavily, right? If you use Instagram all the time, ask for the Instagram handle of that person. Really straightforward, right? Rather than asking for six different platforms and you're only going to use one of them, just go for the things that are actually relevant to your business and the way you communicate. But the other thing you really want to make sure you're getting down is a preferred method or preferred format for how they want to be spoken to. Because each person has a preference. Face-to-face, -face, phone, text, email, social media, you know, WhatsApp is another one that's really popular. I do that a lot with my team and with friends and family back home. You've got your preferred methods, but so do they. I find it's best to communicate with them how they wish to be communicated with. So if you have a person that is, you know, telling you they want to be text or send a message on WhatsApp rather than a phone call, go with that. And then ask if you can call them later on rather than just leading with a phone call there. Because knowing people nowadays, they probably just won't even answer the phone. So it's mm -hmm. optimizing what you're doing for what they want. Not really rocket science stuff, but a lot of people will overlook that. Now, this next category here is professional info. And the reason why you'd want this is perhaps you can do interviews with these people for sure. 
But at the same time, you're going to learn about how you can better connect this person with people that maybe need them. Say you have someone that designs websites in your database and you find out a little bit more about what they do. If you then are surveying someone else in your database and they say that they are wanting to be connected with someone to help with the IT side of their business, could be a good connection to have there. And it positions you in the center of that relationship. And this is something, again, that relates to your interviews. As you do more and more interviews, you're going to find out about different people, professions, uh, you know, things that people do. And you're going to find out about what their needs are and who they service. And then it's about connecting them together. Because in those connections, you're making one of the people money. And for potentially both of them, you're helping them overcome a challenge or obstacle in their business or get towards a goal. And so that's a really great thing about the Park Bench platform. It's really pushing the connection piece for that real estate agent who is, or, or mortgage lender, because both of those professions are really uniquely positioned in you know, a community to be those connectors, right? Sometimes, especially for a real estate agent, you're not limited to a geographic you know, location like an office space, although you might have an office, you're out and about all the time. So it gives you that freedom and flexibility to meet people from all over rather than just located within a couple of blocks from your, your office. Mm -hmm. So gathering that professional information, super valuable. Now, the next one here is personal information. And this is where people get a little bit nervous because some people are worried about, oh, should I ask for this information? I always say this, if you're going to use that information, it's worthwhile asking, so long as you pre-frame why and how you're going to use that. So right off the bat, marital status. Because if you can find out a little bit more about that significant other and what they do, again, you can maybe connect them with people and professions that are going to benefit them or they can help. Um, but at the same time, you're going to get to know your database a little bit better. And this happened recently for, for myself. My wife has quite a good relationship with our uh, insurance agent. Um, I've spoken to her maybe once or twice, but she sent me a little birthday card, right? Common thing to do, mm -hmm. but that was a really nice little touch there for my relationship with her but even for my wife's relationship with her because she's going to see that she took the time to send that and she's going to go wow that's that's really nice of her and it actually has that double handed effect i guess uh on the relationships being formed now other things to consider is birthdays you know like we just went through there uh, and even things like household income and this is another one where people get a little bit squirmish but again really valuable for your purposes in real estate or whatever the role is that you're doing. Because with annual household income, you're gonna find out maybe which bracket they are in, in terms of uh, buying or uh, selling a home. So with this one, you don't have that in the survey as just like an open field for them to put in their exact number. The best way to highlight this is to give them a uh, you know multiple choice or the option to choose between a bracket. So it could be, you know, zero to 60,000, right? 61,000 to 100,000, 101,000 to this number, that number to a high number. And that way people don't feel like they are telling you their exact details, but they're putting themselves in a little bracket there, which is gonna be relevant for you, especially for buyers, right? If you're gonna be working with a buyer, you wanna get a good idea of where they're at in terms of their earnings, because that's going right. to really help your process. Now, other things, again, sometimes straightforward that some agents are going to think, yes, of course, I want to have this. Others might think, oh, I don't really care about that. That's fine. You know, kids, grandkids, pets even. But as you move down towards the bottom of this, you've got other things that are more related to their interests. And this is really for follow-up. Because say you survey someone in your database and they love the outdoors, right? They love hiking and you've recently interviewed a hiking group or uh, organization or uh, kind of networking group that does that as an activity, you could share that interview with this person as an item of value. And you can say, hey, I actually was able to interview a group that um, was you know, really, really engaged in hiking. I know that this is something that you are interested in. So if you want to learn more about them, just sort of send it your way. Link, send. And that way, it's a quick little follow-up. And what you're really doing here is you're creating value that way with the intention of that person responding, going, oh, wow, thank you so much. 
Because that's the other challenge that people have with follow-up, getting a response. And so items of value, which can generate at least a thank you, or wow, thanks for considering me or thinking of me, then opens the door to your next response and starting to continue a conversation. Because that's your first obstacle, getting them to reply. And once you can get that, then you can start to transition into other things. How's work going? Or my work's going this way, or I'm doing this lately, or I've had these cool updates. What have you been up to? That's kind of the discussion you transition into. So finding out about whether or not they are interested in, you know, the outdoors, school activities, you know, movies and films, sports. But some of these fields you may want to omit depending on your personal preference. Uh, politics and government can be one of those ones. Uh, some areas it is a very serious topic, a heavy topic. Other areas is a little bit more lighthearted. You want to make sure that you're keeping in line with the, uh, you know, the standards of conversation in your area. If it's a normal thing to talk about, go for it. If it's something that people don't mm -hmm. really like to talk about, maybe just avoid that. So the same sort of thing about how they kind of assign themselves here. Are they a foodie? Are they outdoorsy? But again, if you want to ask religion, if you're going to find a reason to use that, go for it. But the fourth piece, I guess, of these surveys here is home information. Now, this is so that we can better serve them. So asking where they're based, when they last move, when they expect to move next, you may already have this information, but it's valuable for yourself. Okay, so mm -hmm. asking them, are they interested in investing in real estate, right, for cash flow equity, or maybe they want to fix and flip homes or invest in commercial real estate. Okay, so these are questions that you can just have a little checkbox and all they need to do is tick it, but now it is going to create a completely different conversation that you can have with that individual. So making it as easy as possible for them to answer these things rather than provide their life story at each individual question, that's going to streamline this process big time for you. Now, I've mentioned this before, the most effective way to really get this rolling is to incentivize it. Does that mean you have to invest a whole bunch of money into this? No, right? You could work with local business owners that you've interviewed and provided value to and say, hey, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, giveaway uh, survey. Is that going to be something you're interested in participating in? Or it could be that one business is like, this is a great idea. If we can like share the results, that'd be fantastic because maybe they want to increase their network. It could be a mortgage lender, for example, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. So the best way to do this is to have tiered pr prizes. So number one position, number two, number three. And the way you do that is a random draw. It could be gift cards, discounts, you know, things like that. And then after that, when you go through your initial wave of people answering it, which ideally you're going to get the bulk of the responses, round two, you're going to send out that same survey to anyone that didn't respond. And you're going to highlight things, uh, highlight that it's something for everyone, but it's going to be little, right? It could be that it's a free coffee from a restaurant that you're working with, right? Something really cheap, small, easy that you can get a lot of, right? Uh, or it could be that you want to double your uh, prizes that you can get. So instead of spending $100 on coffee at the local uh, cafe, you say, I'm going to spend $100 on coffee to buy a 50% discount. So then that way, instead of giving out you know, $52 coffees, you can give out 100 50% off these $2 coffees. So then you have to pay a dollar for it. And that's a great way to double the number of prizes that you're offering and get more people coming to these businesses, which they're likely going to be excited about because you're going to be making their money. So that is one strategy to do this. Another strategy could be a, a you know, collective giveaway from a variety of local businesses that you advertise throughout the uh, survey. Uh, another way you can do this is just have one single prize and push for that. Now, can you do this without a prize? Of course you can. But I find that people will be far more likely to actually give uh, you know, their time and energy into filling out the survey if there's a reason behind why they should do that that benefits them. Mm -hmm. So this strategy is a really, really great way to, to build up what you're doing. But the last thing that I do add for this is that it's very important that you incorporate a field in your survey. I'm just going to change that to the survey tab, which is for email address. Okay, at the very minimum, you want to have that email address and likely you want to have the first name and last name as well as required answers. 
and you want the whole thing to be required and that's cool. But if there's any fields that you absolutely need from an organizational standpoint, you've got to make sure those are required fields because there's nothing worse than doing the survey and not knowing who's actually answered what. So any questions about you know, what we've covered through this? It's a little different, right? It's, it's completely optional. It's not really park bench, but no. it's park bench parallel. Um, yeah, thoughts, impressions, questions about what we've covered so far. Do you see it as a, something that would be beneficial for what you would be doing? Yeah, I think it's uh, gonna be something down the line, but it is uh, a unique thing. And I think there's a few there's a few businesses that we know in our areas that are borderline friends mm -hmm. of, of either of us. And I think they would be great ones to do this on because they, they obviously have more trust in us than just the stranger would. Yep. Um, so those ones would be the first ones we'd go after, I think. And is there a way to incorporate the survey into the, the newsletter uh, or is that a, a, should we keep that a separate thing? You want to do this separate so that way there's more attention that comes onto this because the more mm -hmm. other items there are, um, you know, within like a newsletter, hypothetically, the more that the attention is being pulled away. Now, sometimes something can really draw the main um, bulk of attention for sure. But what I would recommend doing is sending this separately. And that would be through using like a, an automated uh, email service through your CRM. So if you go to CRM like constant contact, uh, oh, if I can spell correctly, you know, this has got, got the email marketing software that you can use as part of this. Personally, my uh, experience is with HubSpot. I think this is great CRM. It's totally free uh, for people to use. And what you can do is send out uh, emails and marketing from this uh, on their different plans. And you've got a lot of variety to it. You just need to create that email, put that link into it, and then send it through. You can also be able to track who has opened the survey, uh, who has not opened that email. You know, it just gives you some good information, which, you know, understanding who has opened and not opened the email in the first place is going to change how you're going to approach them. Because maybe you're going to follow up over the phone or maybe you're going to follow up uh, over email or social media to really remind them to do the survey within a specific time timeframe. Um, that can be a, a really great way to make sure that people are actually committing and, and really doing what you're actually looking for from them. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good feature to see if they've actually opened it or not, because we've had we we've had clients tell us that they have, and you can see that they really haven't. So, it, <laughs> yeah, they um, they I don't I don't think they know that we can tell. You know, so yeah. it kind of lets you in on what they're what they're really are doing. Exactly. Read receipts is what they're often referred to as. It's a game changer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or if you open yeah. if you send an email to someone, you see that they've opened it fourteen times. You know you're like, hmm, mm -hmm. maybe I should call this person. Just be like, hey, I just want to check in, see how you're doing. Because if they're taking the time to go back into it, I mean, they might just be something messing up on their, their email, but you know, that is uh, valuable uh, information to have for anything that you're doing, whether it's a survey, whether it's information you're sending out. So yeah, so long as they read receipts, that's what I strongly recommend. Right. Cool. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is a cool idea. I think we're, we're definitely going to utilize it, but it's, uh, 